What is going on everybody, it's Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be talking about one trade that I made today on the 1st of March in 2019, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that I personally see potential in over these next couple of weeks in March of 2019. But before we do get into this, for everybody out there that finds value in these videos you enjoy the videos here on youtube feel free to go down below and hit that like button and drop a comment as well what types of videos do you want me to make? Do you have any specific requests on what videos to make here in the future? I would love to hear what you guys want to see, and I'd be glad to make any videos that you guys request down there in the comment section. And if you're new to the channel, feel free to join our 100% free Discord group chat, as well as our 100% free Facebook group. Both of those are linked down below in the description box and without further ado guys let's talk about what ended up happening today in the overall stock market so we can see here the SPX, the S&P 500, the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies ended up closing off the day today up $19.20, up around 0.7%. The Dow Jones ended up closing up around $110, up around 0.43%. And the NASDAQ did very well today, guys, compared to the three uh, or the two rather un other indices, up around 0.8%. Up $56.75. So overall today, guys, on this Friday, March 1st, pretty solid day out there in the overall stock market. I personally think anything above 0.5% in any specific index in the overall market is a very, very solid day in the overall, you know, indices. And we saw that today out of the three major ones. Actually, no, we did not. The Dow was roughly right around 0.5%, 0.43%. But overall, very, very solid day. And for those of you guys that watched my video yesterday called S&P 500 is at a critical support level, well, we ended up bouncing pretty heavily at that support level that we were talking about in yesterday's video on the SPX and we can see that a bit closer here on the 30 day uh, 90 minute chart and we can see it you know just like I mentioned in yesterday's video and like we've been talking about over these past couple of weeks in these market update videos, the SPX and the entire market in general has been trading within this channel, the resistance here and the support. And pretty much what I was talking about in yesterday's video was that we sold off from 2815, which is the resistance here, down to the support level, which was at the bottom of this trend line, as well as on the 50 simple moving average. And we were expecting a bounce here or a break below, which would have started a downwards trending pattern for the SPX. And of course, now that we saw what ended up happening today, we ended up having a solid green day pushing above, confirming the bounce on this support level right here on the SPX. And now, guys, we finally broke out of that resistance actually that we were trading under yesterday right at around $2,790. And it's looking like we're trading in between this channel now from around $2,790, $2,795, up to around 2815 and let me explain why that is where we're trading between right now we can see back in the beginning of november of 2018 we topped off in the spx at about 2815 and when we sold off from there that made it a new resistance and obviously in the beginning of december we had a terrible sell off in the stock market very very brutal from about 2795 2790 all the way down to about 23 346 and that made this level once we broke down a new resistance as well but once we break above a resistance it becomes a new support and now we can see we're slowly breaking above there we already did today and that means we're trading between this new support level and the next resistance that we see at about 28 15 here 
and the SPX, the SMP 500. So what am I watching, guys, over these next couple of uh, trading days? Obviously, today's Friday. What am I watching for next week? Well, I'm going to watch and see, are we going to continue uh, pushing up here towards the next resistance, which, again, is at about 28.15? And are we going to break that, continue the uptrend pattern, and start to test the resistance of the top of this channel, <clears throat> Which at that point, guys, if we did actually get above there, that would be a good sign that we're slowly pushing up and going to test, honestly, those all-time highs. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves. We still have a ways to go before we do test those all-time highs. And we are creeping up, guys, slowly but surely to those all-time highs now. We're about 4.6% off from where we are right now at about 2,800 back up to those all-time highs at about 29.40. So next week, guys, very simple. You know, I'm going to be watching to see are we going to break out of 28.15, continue the uptrend, and slowly start to test the top of this um, resistance. And of course, you know, if we do end up pushing up more next week in the stock market, guys, a lot of these large cap stocks are going to open up some nice opportunity. A lot of these ETFs that we trade, these market ETFs that trade based upon the SPX and the entire market, and they benefit whenever the market goes up, they're going to be very great plays as well. TQQQ, being one of them, right? So keep an eye on those and especially the pattern and the resistance levels that I just talked about here for the SPX. So the Dow Jones today, guys, like we said, up around 0.43% pretty solid day up about $110 and we've been saying that we've been trading in between this channel here from the resistance back in uh, the uh, end of November which is obviously now a new support and the resistance from back in the beginning of November so the beginning of November resistance and the end of November resistance is where we're trading between right now in the Dow Jones so we ended up popping up a couple of days ago back up nearly to 26200 ended up getting rejected by that resistance we pulled back held the old resistance as a new support and now it's looking like we're slowly starting to bounce off the support of this channel and i know this doesn't look exactly straight but you guys get the idea, right? We are bouncing towards the bottom of this channel, towards the support level, and we're slowly starting to push back up. So very similar to the SPX, guys. I'm going to be waiting for this upcoming week to see, are we going to continue this uptrend? Are we going to bounce here and push and test the $26,200 level? Are we going to break that and potentially get closer to the all-time highs, which at this point, we're about 3.3% off? You know, that's what I'm watching for, and I'm very, very excited to see what is going to end up happening. And one of the stocks that I'm currently swing trading right now is a part of the Dow 30, and that is Johnson & Johnson. And that one's been doing very, very well well recently and we're going to be talking about that in a couple of minutes here so stay tuned for that but overall the Dow Jones pretty pretty solid day today and the Nasdaq up 0.8 percent like we said up around 60 dollars on the day a lot of the big tech stocks did well today Apple up about a dollar 85 up around one percent pretty solid there Facebook up around 0.5 percent today Amazon had a solid move of about 2% today. Netflix was down today, but Google up around $21, up around 2%. And Microsoft keeps on trucking, guys. Remember I traded this one a couple of, or last week or the week before, I swing traded this one, ended up getting out a bit early. And since then, guys, it's just continued to push and push today up about 0.45%. And for all you that don't know, the NASDAQ is a tech-heavy, index and whenever we see the nasdaq do well you better believe the tech stocks especially the individual big large cap tech stocks are doing pretty well as well so in terms of the nasdaq here guys we're looking to trade between that same channel like we're trading in the dow and the spx right no difference here between the nasdaq the dow and the spx i mean obviously there are some slight differences the dow is already trading in between that channel from the uh you know two old resistances right the spx 
is slowly starting to get in there right now. And that's the same situation as the NASDAQ, right? It's slowly starting to get in here and looking to trade between $7,100 and $50, which honestly, guys, it's already holding this old uh, resistance roughly as a new support based on today's trading. And now we're looking to gap fill up to about $7,230. And from there, if we do end up breaking above there, guys, and we do end up filling to the top of this channel, we're going to be you know trying to test the all-time highs again in the nasdaq but the thing here is that the nasdaq's actually fairly far off from the all-time highs about seven percent compared to about 3.5 percent with the dow jones and about four percent with the spx so the nasdaq does have a bit more ground to cover here um you know in terms of getting to those all-time highs but again with the type of market we're in guys we're seeing a bunch of green right now there is a bit of optimism right in the stock market so we could potentially start to push out of these excuse me, out of these resistance levels this upcoming week. But again, only time will tell. And that is why we do daily analysis here on the YouTube channel. And you should be doing your daily analysis on the overall markets and the three major indices that comprise the U.S. markets so we can understand where we are headed, guys. Because let's say we take a couple days off, a week off, we're going to miss the whole picture of what's going on. Obviously, we can come back and look at what's been going on, but trust me, it benefits a lot to do your research daily and do your analysis daily rather than doing it once a week or once a month, especially if you want to become, you know, a good trader and investor and a good you know, person that understands the market well, right? If you want to understand the market well, it's very important to just diligently do this stuff every single day. So that's what the overall markets are looking like based on the close today, guys, Friday, March 1st. 2019 so what did i end up trading today for all you that watch my morning video i talked about a couple of stocks and etfs there and really only one of the ones i talked about i believe did well right and that was dwt i talked about tesla we saw tesla ended up tanking today i talked about square square ended up tanking today as well jnug i talked about jnug JNUG ended up tanking as well. So a lot of the ETFs and stocks that I was watching this morning didn't go as planned, didn't go too well, right? And really, I didn't end up trading them due to that. But sometimes that does end up happening. Sometimes the stocks you're planning to trade, a lot of them, maybe sometimes all of them won't go your way. But the one that did go my way today, guys, and one I did end up trading was DWT. And for those of you guys that recall in my video this morning, we were talking about this double top formation here on crude oil. And for those of you guys that don't know, a double top is a bearish pattern. So we saw a top off here a couple of weeks ago, about a week ago, actually, two weeks ago at about $57.50 for crude oil. We pulled back, we held a higher low, the uptrend was still being continued at this point in time here when we pulled back and slowly started to push up. And what we wanted to see for the uptrend to continue even further and to potentially play UWT was for us to get out of this 5750 resistance to push to another higher high, right? That's what we want to see for the continuation of the uptrend. And we saw this morning, guys, we were seeing a strong resistance on this level right here at this level at about 5750. And I was looking to see if this was going to be either a double top formation, if we were going to pull back heavily from this resistance to play DWT, or were we, were we going to break out to potentially the $58 level, $58.50 to play UWT. And for those of you guys that don't know, let me clarify this quickly because we do get new viewers on the channel every single day. For those of you guys that don't know, UWT is a bull ETF, meaning it goes up in price whenever crude oil is going up in price, right? UWT, take a look at this one. It's been going up in price. We can see it literally has pretty much the same exact chart as crude oil, but whenever crude oil is selling off, we're trading and, uh, you know, DWT 
typically goes up, or it does go up rather, not typically, it does go up when crude oil ends up selling off. And we can see it has a very, pretty much the opposite, the opposite of the, of the chart. It's like a mirrored, mirrored image in a sense, right? You can see DWT crude oil, it's like you flip the chart, right? You can see that very clearly. So we saw the top off here at about 57.50, the double top formation, very bearish. And we started to sell off pretty heavily heading into 9 a.m., 10 a.m. here. And then we can see that once we start to sell off very, very heavily, DWT, if we go on this chart very quickly, go to the one day, one minute, we can see it spiked up like crazy, right? From about 790 in pre-market hours, we sold off to 767, which initially ended up opening up a nice margin of profit. And then we filled that entire gap. And once we broke this gap here, guys, that's actually when I ended up building a position to start and trade DWT because at this point I saw crude oil was selling off very aggressively. So this was a very quick little scalp trade in UWT. I literally took about a 1.75% profit in the matter of like five 10 minutes trading UWT. This was a very, very, very quick in and out trade. So this was actually one of the few day trades that I did end up taking this week. And honestly, guys, I'm very happy with it. And I finished off this week pretty strong Friday on a strong note. And for those of you guys that don't know, typically on Friday, I'm a little bit more relaxed when it comes to trading. Not really relaxed, but I don't try and force anything. I wait more and I'm really just patient on Fridays, guys, and I wait more for opportunities to come to me, although I do do that every single day, but I'm extra patient on Friday because I don't want to ruin a week's worth of gains, you know, on one bad decision, on an impulse decision, you know, at the end of the week on a Friday. So that's what I ended up day trading today, guys, DWT. For those of you guys that don't know, I'm actually in Coca-Cola as well, ticker symbol KO. Did not end up adding more shares into this one. I'm still holding my initial position where I got in at about $45. And why am I still holding, guys? Well, I'm still holding because I want to see if we're going to break out of this 50 SMA resistance and initially or uh, ultimately break above the $46 resistance where I do plan on adding more money into Coca-Cola. So not much movement, guys, today at all. Up about $0.04 cents on the day. Literally barely any movement at all in Coca-Cola. And I do feel comfortable holding this one over the weekend. Not really scared to do that whatsoever. So that's what I'm doing in terms of Coca-Cola. Plan on adding more above $46 and plan on cutting losses if we do get into the $44.20 level, $44 flat in terms of Coca-Cola. And for those of you guys who have been paying, a lot, uh, paying attention over the past couple of weeks here, you know, J&J &J is a stock that I've been in for about two, three weeks at this point as a swing trade, right? So I've been in since about 135-ish, 135 right? 135, 136, right around here I ended up getting in. And this one's just been nicely, slowly trucking along, pushing up, making about 0.5%, you know, per week at this point on, on uh, you know, on average 0.51% per week. And today we had a very solid day up about 1.25%. And I do plan on selling J&J &J at about $140, which is a previous support, which is now obviously a new resistance since we did break below that level. So that's a quick little trading update, guys. Still holding J&J, &J, Coca-Cola, day traded DWT today. Let me know down below in the comment section, what did you guys end up trading today? I would love to know. So in terms of some other stocks here on my watch list, we talked about Square this morning and we saw a huge dip on Square stock today, down about $4 or rather 4%, 4.65%. And what I want to see for this upcoming week, and I'm going to be talking about this more on Sunday's video, because on Sunday's video, I really break down, um, you know, what I'm watching for the upcoming week. I typically go between, uh, you know, through uh, 10 to 15 stocks on that day. But 
to really just give a quick little gist here, what I'm waiting for is, is I want to honestly see if we're going to hold this 50 SMA as a support now with this big dip. And that really just opened up a nice 6% margin of profit. So in square, I want to see if we're going to hold this, slowly start to push back up and test that $81 resistance level. And on Tesla, guys, we saw a huge drip, uh, dip today from about 315 literally down to about $294. So are we going to see some pushback up in Tesla stock this upcoming week to capitalize on some of that loss that we saw uh, today? I'm very interested in seeing if that is going to end up happening and another one guys i know i traded dwt today now i want to see if i can hop into crude oil if it does end up pushing back up a bit here and we're going to see whether or not it's going to hold this old resistance as a new support at around 55.50 if it does slowly start to push back up you know, this could be a good opportunity to hop into UWT this upcoming week. So again, guys, if you want to see a further breakdown on a lot of stocks that I'm personally trading for this upcoming week, subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. On Sundays, I go through about 10, 15, sometimes even 20 stocks that I'm watching and that you guys actually shout out either on YouTube on the comment section, on Discord, on Facebook, on IG, wherever. So if you guys have any ticker symbols that you guys want me to talk about, drop a comment down below right now and I'll talk about that stock ETF, whatever it is, in the next video. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe, follow me on Instagram as well as on Twitter, and join our Discord group chat as well as our Facebook group. All of those are linked down below 100% free. I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.